Come on. Give the Lord a big shout. Give the Lord a prayer. Father, we just thank you. There's no one like you. You are so faithful. You are so good. You are so loving. You are so merciful. You are so consistent. Thank you, Father. Thank you for keeping us all these years. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for helping us. We honor you, our King. We honor you, our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Come on, celebrate our King this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Is this God not good? He is just a good God. Hallelujah. I mean, there's no other God worthy of our worship. No other God worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're excited like our mom, come and jam your hands together. Amen, amen. Please take your seat this morning. It's good to be back home. Hallelujah. After six long weeks. Um, I mean, I miss you too, man. I miss all of you. Um, and I'm happy to see all of you are doing well. I'm happy the ministers, pastors, HODs, and co are taking good care of everybody. I'm happy. I'm so happy. Clap now if you're clapping well. Clap. They did a good job. I didn't know if, if I'll meet anybody when I came back. But I can see that all of you are fine. You're doing well. Hallelujah. So, um, well done. Well done. Thank you for taking care of yourselves. Thank you of all your siblings in the Lord. Amen. And, um, yeah, we had a fruitful time in the U.S. Um, we did, um, um, it was supposed to be 10 cities, but we did nine cities in the United States. And um, that was a lot of traveling. I thought you would clap. Clap, oh. Hmm. If you, are, if you are doing that much traveling back to back, it takes the goodness of God and the favor of God. Um, those of you that follow us on social media, remember I shared one of our flights. We landed and took off at the same time. You know, the pilot landed and took off immediately. You know, so I had to wait behind to ask the pilot what happened. And I was explaining that there was bubbles and air under the aircraft when he landed. So that means there was, there was going to be a lot of bouncing and it would make it, the runway was not long enough for it to, to break. So after he landed, he took off again to go and do a turn around and try again. So when he saw my face, he said, I should not worry that he's a military pilot and they do turnarounds all the time. I said, try not to be doing it <laughs> when I'm around. Just do it on your own. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm just trying to show you that, um, you know, doing these many flyings and all that, you know, you, you need God's grace to keep you as you go. Praise God. So God was good. Lots and lots of lives were blessed. We believe that, yes. Lots and lots of people were blessed in all the cities that we visited. So thank you for all your prayers, your support, and the way the things of the kingdom works. Those that stayed home and those that went on the field, all reap the same rewards. So the rewards are going to be accrued to your email. Uh, to be sent to your email by God, praise God. <laughs> yes, we have sent a mail to all of you. <laughs> if you don't understand, that's fine. <laughs> praise God. Today is so today is special for many reasons. Um, number one, because we are back home. Uh, number two, it is 27 years, 27 years of ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't feel like it at all. You know, the time just flies. I don't know if there are some people here that probably are not 27 years old. Yes, so that means when we started ministry, you were still in heaven with your heavenly father. You had no biological father then. You had a heavenly father. Then God now pitied you and sent you down here. You know, so welcome. Welcome. Then today is also our wedding anniversary. So it's been 18 years 
since this girl decided to follow me. I don't know what she saw. She decided to follow me 18 years. Praise God. That also seemed very fast. Okay. She's not happy about something. Let me see. Be careful. You know you don't have... I'm joking. That's not what she said. <laughs> That's not what she said. I'm joking. <laughs> oh, praise God. Uh, um, so what was I saying? Hey, 18 years, Jerry. Since this guy started sending me love notes like this. She always sends me love notes. She always, always like me. <laughs> praise God. Yeah, so God is good. Um, today we are going to start a series titled God Feedings as we celebrate. Um, how many of you enjoyed the praise and worship and the ministrations? Amazing. Amazing. So I'll just share for a short time and get out of your way so that we'll do some more dancing and some more praising for our King. Amen. I was enjoying myself. So we're going to do more. I'll just preach a short message and we'll dance and praise God. Amen. All right. So we're starting a series today titled God Fidence, and it is because we, um, it's about confidence, but it's to remind us that our own confidence is not in what other people have confidence in. Our confidence is based on God, is on God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? And confidence is so crucial because as children of God, you don't get all that belongs to you without confidence. Confidence is how you get what is yours. It is already yours, but... There are systems and structures that want to threaten you, that want to intimidate you, that wants to make it look like you're not going to get it. So you need your confidence to go and take what is yours. And I pray for everyone to understand my voice. You will get what is yours in the name of Jesus. You will be all God has created you to be, and you will do all God has created you to do in the name of Jesus. A lack of confidence is part of what stops people from entering their promised land. The children of Israel, God prepared them or prepared Canaan land for them, but they could not enter it because they went there and they saw giants in the land. And they came back and said, there are giants there. And God said, it doesn't matter there are giants there. All you need is the boldness to go and dislodge the giants. I pray for you, whatever industry, whatever area, whatever space you're operating in, even if there are giants there before you, as you go, you will dislodge them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Trust me, God will give you the strength. All you need is the confidence. God is with you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? God is with you. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. It means your reward comes to you by your confidence. By your confidence. There's so much God has prepared for you, so much. You will not realize it if you don't have confidence. If you always come in a timid way, many people think God is impressed by their timidity. If only you knew God. If only you knew him well. God never endorses timidity. Everything he likes you to do, he likes you to do it boldly. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? He likes you to do it boldly. Let me shock you. Even when you make mistakes, eh? God likes you to come boldly. You know, some people like to come... <laughs> I'm a useless person. I'm a fool, oh God. You know this is what we think. We think this is we impress him. See, stop equating men and God. All right? God is not men. Men will like you to make a mockery and a fool of yourself when you want to beg them. Men like that. Men like you to go beneath yourself for them. That's men. God is totally different. God enjoys when you walk in the, in the consciousness of of who he has made you. He likes it. When you come with the authority and the boldness of who you are, it impresses him. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why you hear things like, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Not without crying. So without faith. So those that come to him must believe that he is. And it's a reward of those. So he wants you to come. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How does he want you to come? Did you bring it on the screen? No? How does he want you to come? Boldly. Come boldly. Look at this. Bridget, put it on the screen. I need somebody to see it. Because many people think when I come, you know, in crying, it's impressive. Say, let us therefore come how? 
How are we coming? Boldly to the throne of grace that we may what? Obtain mercy. <laughs> we obtain mercy. We obtain what? I know there's a lot of reigning prayer in the body of Christ where people pray for mercy. It's, it's, it's more an emotional thing. It's not a biblical. You will not see it in scripture. You will not see it. The reason why we're even here at all is because mercy has been given. If mercy has not given, you can't even talk. You can't be here. You, you, you know, <laughs> because we don't have good Bible history. Those days, they don't even call God. You can't call God. You, don't call, you, you can't call his name. You are, you are gone. So why we are here at all it's because there's mercy. If there's no mercy, you won't even be here. So he prays you come boldly and obtain. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy. And do what? Find grace there. The grace has been given. You are just the one finding it. They say you find it. It's given. They say you collect it. That's what they're saying. He likes you to come boldly. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You know, people think repentance means you cry. Do you know what the real Bible word repentance means? Change how you think. Crying is not inside. Now, it's good to cry. If you like to cry, oh, by all means, please. Cry yourself. But don't, don't, you see, don't, don't tie it. Don't say, ah, if you see, I cried. It's good if you like crying. You know, some people just like crying before. Even for the people again, they cry. When they're watching Indian movie. You know, you just like crying. Cry. But don't now say, oh, it's your crying that got you anything. No, no. They are not linked in any shape or form. The word repentance actually means change your mind. Change how you are seeing things. So, let's use the example that you are living in fornication, for instance. So, you slept with someone you're not married to. And you are crying. That doesn't move God. What will impress him is when you actually change how you are thinking. If you don't change how you are thinking, you are going to do it next week again and cry again. It's just a show. That's not impressing God. You're not moving God. The day you actually understand why this is not the lifestyle to live. And your thinking changes. God doesn't mind whether you cry or not. The crying doesn't help you. It doesn't change you. If your thinking has changed, he knows you'll be all right. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? Come boldly. See, again, Hebrews, it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See what it says. It said, let all your conversion be without covetousness and be content with such as you have. For he had said, God had said, I will never what? Leave you, nor what? I can't hear you. I will never what? No. See the next verse. So that we may what? Boldly say. The Lord is my helper. How should you say it? I mean, you should go everywhere saying, you, you, you know who they help me. You know who I be. But this time you're not saying it because of your biological background. You're saying it because of who your helper is. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Boldly say. Boldly say. Boldly say. Boldly say. Listen, I will make it. I will keep making it. There are only two options available to a Christian. You either make it or you make it. Are you getting what I'm saying? You either make it or what? Or you make it. That's the only two options available. So by the by the demeanor and the and the attitude and the mindset and the prayer of many believers, you can tell that they are not approaching the things of God from confidence. They are coming timidly. They are coming shyly. <laughs> oh God. Oh, I'm a big fool, oh Lord. Lord, I'm a useless idiot. I'm a worm. These are the things people say or portray. How many of you here that are really good parents? I'm not talking about that you're a wicked, traumatized parent. I mean, you're a good, loving parent who like your son to walk up to you and say, Mommy, I'm a big fool. 
I'm an idiot. Can you imagine I broke uh, the glass cup? I'm just a big fool. <laughs> you say glass cup. We have many. If they break, anybody can break. You, you, that's not what, you know, except you're a traumatized parent, then you, that's not, you know. But if, if you're a real normal, <laughs> like, my lady, glass cup. So those things don't impress God at all. See, eh, and when you even understand these things, eh, it will help you not to judge another Christian. Anytime you see a Christian looking down at another Christian, he, he himself doesn't understand the grace that has been released to him. If you understand it for yourself, you'll be very gracious to other people. The wickedness we experience in the body of Christ, because the person himself is he, he's, he's under judgment and condemnation for himself first. So he has nothing else to give you but, the, but, but judgment and condemnation. Are you getting this, somebody? You must always... He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. One version calls it the spirit of timidity. Every time you see fear or timidity, it's not God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. God doesn't like timidity at all. He wants you to come boldly. He, wants you, he always wants you to operate with a consciousness. And when you get it, then people must interpret some part of your life as arrogance. If they've not said it, then you've not got it. There's a confidence you used to talk sometimes. People say, well, what's doing this one? If they've not said it about you, you're not here operating it. When you operate it, they'll be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Somebody must yemu for you. If you don't know yemu, is yemu. <laughs> That's the English version. If you get it, somebody must yemu. I said, I was doing this one. Because you will talk with so much confidence. But you see, that confidence is not based on your ability. It's not based on your connections. It's not even based on your own righteousness. It's god Are you here, somebody? You must always think like this, like that. Oh, I detest the, the prayer points I see Africans praying. Very, very defeated. Doesn't sound like people that have a covenant with God at all. It sounds like a fearful people and afraid people. <laughs> oh no, if you hear Nigerians praying, you think these people are very, oh man, God has dejected them. This, this, they are not praying at people that are, that are at a level. The day you understand what level you are praying, we're not praying from defeat to victory. We're praying from victory to victory. Very different perspective. Very different position. We're raised and we're seated far above all principality. It's a position. Satan exists, but you need to know where he, what level he is when you're addressing him. You can't be addressing him as if he's higher than you. As if both of you are dragging. Oh no, I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. God and devil are not word and opposite. Oh. You know what an opposite? Black, white, good, bad. This is how people are seeing God and Satan. So they see God, then Satan. So it looks like they are all, no, 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 no. God is the creator. Satan is a creation. Oh, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It's like comparing the owner of the creator, the, the manufacturer of this mic and this mic. Oh, I don't know. Is it making sense somebody? God is the creator of all things. Satan is a creation. Satan is not a creator. Him and God are not made. And even in the hierarchy of things spiritually, God is on top, followed by Jesus. Then angels. Then Satan. Satan is part of falling angels. You know, Satan was an angel that they sacked. So he's, a, he's on the angelic realm, just as like he's a sacked angel. So he's under the normal angels. So you see the gap. Somebody's saying, Where is the believer in this hierarchy? Oh, I see where your issue is. You, let me whisper it to don't, don't tell anybody. You are in Christ. You are in Christ. So you see that you and Satan are not even in a conversation. You are in Christ. 
That's why when Jesus was here, he kept telling them, I no longer call you servants, I don't call you friends. Because we're now brethren. We are now one. And throughout the Bible, in fact, he said, the way you have loved me is how you love them. So, in other words, God doesn't even love Christ more than he loves you. You are the same. You are in Christ. That's why he said, we're raised up together with him. We are now joint heirs with Christ. Do you know what joint heirs mean? Everything Christ has access to. You to have access to. Are you see, if we begin to examine scripture, you see that the prayer and Jesus are praying. Are emotional but not scriptural. Anything chasing you. That's what Antelope pray. Lion can pray that in the jungle. It's antelope that. If, if Antelope prays that, it's a good prayer because everything is chasing Antelope. Lopat, they chase him. Uh, cheetah, they chase him. Tiger, they chase him. Lion, they chase him. Hyena, self, they chase him. Even cat. There are many small, small dogs. There's a bush dog. Everything is chasing Antelope. So if, if, if an Antelope pray, anything chasing you will not catch you. Anything chasing you God, it, it's a good prayer. If you pray that for Lion, something is wrong. Or you don't know whose son you are. You are the son of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not the antelope of the tribe of Judah. He's not the hyena of the tribe of Judah. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. You don't pray that for a lion. Anything chasing you. He's not aware that it's possible to be chased. Because all his life he has been doing the chasing. Doesn't know what it means to be chased. Anything chasing you from the village. Are you kidding me? When I found out that the lion was not even in any category, the lion is not number one in any category. In animal kingdom, the lion is not number one in any category. Size, lion is not number one. There are many animals way bigger. Listen, guys. <laughs> of course, you know elephant is gigantic, so let's never talk about elephant. Elephant will mistakenly kill lion by leg. Mistake. It's just passing. It's one big leg of elephant match lion is gone. So let's even come down. Even hippopotamus. Even rhino. Please. Those of you that have been to zoo abroad, not Nigerian zoo, please. Don't go to Nigerian zoo. Please. Not Nigerian. If you go to Nigerian zoo, not cow, you go see. <laughs> if you have been to real zoo abroad, all these hippopotamus and rhinos that you see on TV, it's not the same. When you see them physically, they, they are massive. This is what Ben was talking about. Ma- you can't pass here. Oh. Massive. I didn't know. You know, Kotiv just gives you, when you see them live. So, Lion, does, in category of size, Lion is not even on the top 10. Strength, Lion is not there. It's not number one, not number two, not number three. Speed, of course, you can't count speed. You know that um, Cheetah and the rest are faster than Lion. Endurance, Lion doesn't even chase anybody too much. If you chase you, they go. What's wrong with you? On each other, one chop, you just run. <laughs> do you know what I want to do? Do you know, do you know whether I will eat you or not? I beg, leave this baby. He doesn't chase you too much. He doesn't have power. If he runs, if he runs too much, he'll leave you. Say this one, no, bad luck. Carry your bad luck, they go. <laughs> he doesn't chase you much. Meanwhile, there are some other animals that they will chase you forever. Oh. There's some animals that that's their own strategy. They wear you out. There are some wild dogs like that in the jungle. And they even go in group and they, they pass button. So there might be 30 of them chasing you. You can outrun the first set. Five go first chase you. The other five, they wait. They jog. After the first five chase you, you don't outrun them. They'll pass battery. The other five continue. So they'll keep passing battery until you get tired of running. And they'll eat you alive. You go, they watch. They go chop in your presence. They eat you alive. That's what they do. They wear you out. So they, those ones, their endurance is their strength. They don't get tired. They can run forever. That's their strength. They, they run. They run more. They go. <laughs> they, go they, they go. They go. No stop. Until you reach where you can. <laughs> they'll say, hey, sit down. Then go to chop you, you're going to look like this. So, uh, speed is not there. Endurance is not there. Um, when I even found out that even amongst cat family, lion is not even number one in cat family. I heard that tiger is bigger than it. Tiger is stronger than it. Cat family says lion is not number one. So he's not number one in any category. How is he king of the jungle? Because he has one thing. All of them don't have. 
confidence. They say the lion is the strongest among the beasts, not because he's physically strongest, but because he turneth not away for any. That means if lion see elephant, they come, they say they burn you well. Pass here. You decrease. They burn you well, pass here. That the elephant will advise itself. And move on that place. Say the lion turns not away. DJ, give me the scripture. Yes. A lion which is strongest among the beasts, not physically strongest, of course. He said, and does what? Turn it not away for any. So why are you the fear? Go to any industry and go and take over. Turn not away for any. Confidence. Are you here, somebody? Confidence is all the lion has. It's not, it's not number one in any category. Strongest job. There are many animals that their jaw is scatter lion. Even ordinary hyena has a stronger jaw than lion. <laughs> but don't toy with the lion's confidence. And that's where you came from. The lion of the tribe of Judah is your God. Are you here, somebody? So you can't, you can't take all that is yours without confidence. You can't even pray without boldness. Say, come boldly. Ask boldly. You know, there's nowhere in the Bible that says you beg God. Don't beg him. He doesn't like all those things. Any human being like you to suffer and beg. God likes you. God is more impressed. He says it's impossible to, without faith, it's impossible to be. He's impressed when you come with your confidence in him. He loves it. As opposed to when you want to use manipulation. You are used to a beg, sir. He's not impressed by that. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? Come what? Boldly. He says, say boldly. The Lord is my helper. Say it boldly. That the Lord is what? I mean, it doesn't matter. See, say, see, I don't care what men can do. So whether you want to leave or you don't want to leave me, it doesn't change anything. God is my helper. So you treat people with that level of confidence, with freedom. You understand that you're not my source. When I see people come, I say, you are my only source. If you don't help me, I'm dead. I say, you're already dead. Don't put me under pressure. See, if you don't help me, I'm finished. You are the only one that can help me. I'm not the only one. If I'm not here now, you will see move on. You won't die here. I'll see you next week eating ice cream. So I thought you were going to die last week. Don't let people manipulate you into nonsense. This is why some people cry. Oh, my boyfriend, you told me I'm finished. Which finish? Leave the bomb boy. There's a better one God has for you. Say, oh, this girl, I love her so much, but she doesn't love me. Leave the girl. There's a better one for you. There's nothing that is your last chance or last hope. There's no such thing. God is what? Your helper. Say, say it boldly. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not timidly, oh. Say it what? Boldly. Boldly. Because of the backing you have. Say, I'll never leave you to forsake you. When you understand that backing, you go about talking boldly. Do you want to help me? Do you want to have the privilege of helping me? Because if you don't want to help me, somebody has to help me. Move. Boldly. 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 That's how there's a guy in the Bible that spoke like that. His name is Mordecai. He was the one that told Esther that they've passed the decree to kill the Jews. Told Esther to fast and pray. Oh, I wish God would raise a generation of Esthers that can fast and pray. Fast and pray, not for bread and butter. African Christians. If you know how backward our Christianity is, you will be crying. We are too backward. So backward in our Christianity. Esther was praying for policy. Nigerian Christians, what are we fast and praying for? I want to get visa. I hope you know there are people that are so significant that they even beg them to take visa. You know that people that return their green card. Say, <laughs> so I don't know what they Why? What do we do to you? And say, Christian, in Nigeria, fasting. Whatever. I, I want to marry. 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 African Christianity. God will help us. 
bread and and the people we are praying for bread and butter. The people we told him the bread and butter are still in power. So that prayer point is eternal, is eternal prayer point. You are, there is eternal what? It's until this school trend so that I didn't even know that many African countries were still under bondage like that. Though. And honestly, you don't know. That there are many African countries still in heavy bondage. Heavy bondage. So which day will you bring? Oh God, bread and butter, that, that country. That only two people are in charge. We are wasting energy. The prayers we are praying here, nah, 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 disgraceful. Esther prayed to change policy. You can't kill LGBTQ. You take power. That's the way. Say, oh God, kill them. No, you can't kill them. In developed countries, people understand what Christianity is about. Because they know that whoever is in power can make one decision that affects everybody. But here, we just, the, the people are still in power. We are still praying over this thing that they are going to still sign. What they like tomorrow. They are still going to sign what they like. Oh God, give me house. It's okay. After you pray for your own house, your children, they will start the same prayer point again. Where in other countries there's housing planned for everybody. As the population is growing, they are planning. I did a video when I was in Canada one time of a road, a road that they are, they are planning to build in two or three years. They already planned it. That this population will grow by this. They have planned the road. But you, you are praying for road. You are the people that are eating your road money are still in power. Circles. We're going in circles in Africa. Circles. And those are the prayer we like. Oh. Ah. Oh God. Oh God. Father Lord. Father Lord. Build road. Build road. <laughs> he doesn't build road. God does not build road, sir. You will go into those areas with the confidence you have in God and take back the policy. That's how it's done. Apart from that, oh, well, same prayer point. Oh God, give me jeep to climb the flood. Since they bomb me, Lagos still floods. It's more rain. Pray, I won't change it. A sensible person will enter there and change it. So Mordecai, let me come back to Mordecai. <laughs> For Nigeria, prayer point annoy me. <laughs> Mordecai he heard that there was a policy to kill all the Jews. And he came to meet Esther. He said, don't be so comfortable because you're in the palace and think this thing will not affect you. He said, pray about it. And he told, told her, if you decide not to help, he said, deliverance will come from another place. Ah, ah. Somebody that you want to help you, you see threatening him. That's how to talk when you know your confidence in God. Say, I need a ride. But if you, if you, are, too, if you, if you, are, if you are too big to carry me, A ride will come from another place. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need accommodation. But if you are too selfish to accommodate me, accommodation will rise from what? Another place. Listen, you, you are only looking at the one resource God has shown you. He has many. He has many. Sometimes it's when you are rejected in one. That he will open the other ones. He's not wasteful. So he doesn't open things down and just keep them open. So it's when they reject you in one. He says, don't worry. I have many. See here. See here. He said, for if you remain completely silent at this time. Relief and deliverance will arise from, for the Jews from what? Another place. How can somebody want to? She's married to the king. Do you understand? This is like first lady of the country. I mean, that should be your last bus stop, right? There should be no higher place you're looking for. If the first lady himself is a part of our tribe that they want to kill. It's easy. Say, madam, <laughs> just talk to Oga. They threaten her. Say, look, Bia. Gent, draw your ear. You either help or not. If you refuse to help, ta, get out. If you don't want to help, get out. Get out there. <laughs> Let me know what they Deliverance will come from another place. How can you tell first lady that? Who is higher again than first lady? 
The target that's there. Deliverance will come from what? Another place. That's how to talk. Not that you're my last hope. Nobody's my last hope. Nobody is what? Whenever I see people doing, doing last hope, doing without us, you, can, you saw the praise and worship? <laughs> yeah, without us, you cannot. You don't know God. He will make a mockery of you. He will make what? <laughs> Through someone that can't see you. Don't worry, that's a... It's a cryptic message. It's not for everybody. Yeah, last hope. With God, last hope. Don't tell anybody your last hope. Nobody's your last hope. God has resources. He hides them. He's not hiding them from you. He's hiding them for you. So let that person thinking that they're helping you. When they, make, when they brag, God will just sideline them. And bring a better person. Say, if you, if, if, help, oh, they're they about to keep people. It will be good for you to help us. But say, if you decide not to help, he said, deliverance and relief will come from another place. So get out there. Nobody needs you. That's how to talk boldly. Nobody's your last hope. Don't ever use that phrase. Say, I'm my last hope. If you don't help me, I'm finished. No, I never finished. Oh, you got to use another person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Godfidence. Godfidence. You approach everything in life like that, knowing that you either make it or make it. That's what this guy was saying. <laughs> I, I, we either make it through you or make it through on the upside, but there are only two options. We either make it or make it. That's two options. That's how I want you to walk around with li in life. How does a believer think you, can't, you won't make it? I mean, if you don't, what's the alternative for you don't make it? What's the alternative? <laughs> you must be here in all other two ways. And that confidence comes from the fact that you know that you have God's backing. I will never leave you. I have God's backing. When you know who, you, who is behind you and who is with you, there's a way you talk. There's a way you what? There's a way you talk. That's why David harassed Goliath. So you see some circumcised Philistine. In those days, circumcision was how you knew who had the covenant with God and who did not. Because if I don't get covenant with God, why is he shouting? Before then, the other ones had the covenant with God, but they were not confident in their covenant. Goliath was insulting them for 40 days. 40 days. He said, Yala, you're anybody. That's what Goliath was saying. 40 days. He said, if they born your papa, papa, well, come out here. <laughs> All the guys just, <laughs> just say anybody bar me ja. <laughs> say you go collect. You say, mm, go where? Mm. Anybody. <laughs> Nobody could come out. He insulted them, insulted their father. Nobody come out. When David got there and was hearing somebody insulting, he said, who is this insulting the armies of God? Of the living God. The first thing he did before he even went to the battle was asking, what would they give the person that killed this guy? Ay, 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 ay. Hey. You are talking of reward money. You have never asked, you've seen the fighter. You are asking what's the reward. That's confidence. Because he knew he has already won. He wants to know what he will get. Say, so how much do they give the person that beat this guy? Do you see? How, can this guy now pray Nigerian prayer? This guy. Do you see where he's operating from? Already from defeat, from victory. He said, how much are they going to give the guy? He said, a person that beat this guy will not pay tax again. And he will marry the king's daughter. He said, which of them? Is he in Kechi or Belinda? Because I don't like Belinda. I don't like her attitude. He said, we'll give you in Kechi. He was securing what he will gain. Do you know that? He never even go to the fight. Oh. 
from distance, he was securing what he would get. And he got there, they wanted to give him armor. He said, I don't need the armor. My confidence is not in that armor. He said, I come in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is how you are going out this week. <laughs> Everywhere they've told you no before, you are going now to collect a yes. Everywhere they've rejected you before, you are going back now because you'll be accepted. Where it did not work before, as you are going now, it will work in your hands. In the name of Jesus. It will work now. Because now you are coming with confidence. You will be, you'll be funny to think it was the slingshot that killed Goliath. It's not the slingshot. Even though David had skill in the slingshot, he didn't come with confidence in the skill. So this is not meaning you will not have, you will, you will prepare. But you are not coming in the confidence of your preparation. You are coming in the name of the Lord. Come in the name of the Lord. I don't care how many people they've told no before me. They will change your rules when I get there. Amen. I don't care how many people have failed before me. In my own turn, I will make it. Amen. I don't care how much the dollar price is. Listen, don't, don't focus on things that don't matter. Do you know when dollar was 160, we were complaining? Are you aware? I was away, Mr. Debo and Co. You know, 160. We couldn't believe it. Dollar! 160! We're dead in this country! Then they made it 200. We said, ah! 200 naira! What can we buy? We're finished! They made it 360. We said, oh, the country should be locked. It's all over now. 360 naira! They made it 700. Ah! Nobody, nobody will survive. Is 1,000. <laughs> Won't you shut up and start succeeding? Yeah. Eh? Won't you shut up and start succeeding? <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't focus on what doesn't matter. It has always been hard for those that don't know God. It will always be hard if you don't know God. When you know God, say, we'll boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid what men can do. Is your confidence built up this morning? Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big shout. Give the Lord a big praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's practice this scripture. Can you say boldly, the Lord is my helper? I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what dollar shall do unto me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what any economy shall do to me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what any policy shall do to me. Say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what the devil can ever do to me. Say, the Lord is my helper. I have confidence in God. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord a praise this morning. Lord, a praise. What are the two options you have? Let me tell you, neighbor, if you decide not to help me, help will come from another place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, tell your neighbor, you are not my last hope. Tell your neighbor, I'm never stranded. I'm never alone. Because God has said, He will never leave me, nor forsake me. Even if you leave, God will not leave. Even if you forsake me, God will not forsake me. I'm always covered. I'm always protected. I'm always provided for. I'm always taken care of. Come on, celebrate the King this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Lift your hand this morning. And just give him thanks. Because he's always with you. Delay is not denial. That case is not over. 
even if they've passed a negative judgment, they're going to reverse it. Another door is going to open. Another opportunity is going to come. They will do it again. They will open the door again. Another opportunity will arise for you. You are never stranded. Nobody is your last hope. Hey, another opportunity will come. Hey, Malaka, another door will open. Another contract will come. Hey, Kabaladaya. Another another contact will come. Ma de 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 de. Reke bola kata kala la la ba. Hey, kaba ba 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 ba. Yes, all of my head.